Hey GearFacts friends, welcome to my buyer's guide for second-hand keyboards. There are literally thousands of people offering to sell their keyboards out there because they just last forever. So, the deals are plentiful, but what do we choose? What's going to irritate us? What's going to please us? This is what to look for in your second-hand keyboard. You can start to narrow down the exact kind of keyboard you want by looking at two generic ones like this. The top one's a Casio, rebadged as a Radio Shack, the bottom one is an old Yamaha, and both are popular choices as a first keyboard. If you're buying a keyboard for kids, I suggest you look for features that are fun on top of your regular keyboard features. For example, down here on the Yamaha, we've got four drum pads and a whole bunch of animal sound effects. And that's a good respite for kids who are learning piano and occasionally just want to have a bit of fun on their keyboard. This Casio is perhaps a bit more serious, but it still has a whole lot of sounds and rhythms. Check out that big screen there too. It has a keyboard diagram and it also names the sound that you're on, as well as showing bass or treble clefs. Some piano teachers will greatly dispute whether that's helpful or a problem, but the person who's going to be playing this keyboard might simply like the look of it, and that is a factor. Notice also that we've got a pitch bend wheel down on the bottom left here. That's a really fun feature that adds a whole new dimension of expressiveness to your music. And apart from that, it's just fun to play with. In this year, 2019, keyboards of this grade shouldn't set you back any more than about $40 US. On your search, you might find that the previous owner has put the letters of the notes on each of the keys. There are all different kinds of pens that this can be done with, and each has their own easier or more difficult way to clean it off. Don't worry too much about it. It's not a deal breaker. I've never seen printing on keys that couldn't be cleaned off to perfection. The upside is this might give you a point on which to negotiate a little bit on price. Don't forget to look underneath the keyboard. First of all, you've got to be sure that there's a battery cover all present, no worries. The second thing to watch out for, particularly on Yamaha keyboards, is the quality of the rubbers where it makes contact with the ground or the table or the surface that you're putting it on. Because on Yamaha keyboards, after about five years, they start to perish into a nasty tar-like substance that will stain everything. It's not so bad on Casio and all the other brands, but still, give them a good check over. Of course, if the rubber feet are deteriorating, you can cover it up with some tape, but bear in mind, that's going to look pretty nasty. Next thing to watch out for, and you can laugh if you want, is round edges compared to square edges. It may sound like nothing, but round edges are a real pain. If you're taking your keyboard anywhere, to a gig, performance, to school, anything like that, you'll find that you often have to lean it up against a wall just for a moment while you're dealing with your other equipment. And in that moment, it'll only take the slightest bump to make it fall. So if you're on the road in any form, try to get yourself a keyboard with straight edges that'll stand up on its end. Here's another one that could be easily missed and could end up being a bit of an annoyance for you after you've bought your keyboard, and that is actual key noise. So I'm not talking about the tones in the keyboard, I'm talking about that sort of noise. The person using the keyboard is often going to have their headphones on, and if you're hearing this in your house constantly, it's going to become quite irritating for everyone else. So look for something that has lower noise. Compare how quiet this is. The next thing to consider is sockets, and there are a few main ones that you'll want to be looking for. If you're learning some serious piano, a foot switch socket really is a must, because the action of the foot switch is pretty essential in the theory of playing piano. MIDI sockets will allow you to communicate with other hardware. You can also communicate with computers, but with some difficulty. To communicate with a computer more easily, a USB socket is ideal. If you're buying second-hand keyboards, you'll often find old-style communication systems like this old parallel port that you might see on an old printer. Totally obsolete now. This particular keyboard has a saving grace in MIDI in and out sockets here, but no USB. So those are probably the most important sockets to look for, even though many keyboards will have a much wider array that can sometimes be quite bamboozling. But as you're looking through all these keyboards with their speakers and screens and other impressive features, consider for a moment that maybe you could take advantage of the power of your computer or iPad. A simple controller like this will cost you anything from about $30 US. Maybe that's a good option. The apps for your iPad or other computer system are plentiful to choose from and often really good in quality, costing anything from $2 to $100. Another feature that can make owning a keyboard a whole lot more fun is dynamic control like this. That's called a ribbon controller, but more often you'll find dynamic control in knobs like this. As 
as you're listening to the sounds, check that the keyboard you're testing has variable touch response, often called velocity sensitivity. And if you don't already know, this means that if you hit the keys softly, you get a quiet sound, and if you hit the keys firmly, you get a louder sound, and often that louder sound might have a different character as well. So now that you're heading out to buy your new second-hand keyboard, just pause this screen, print out this list. It covers all 12 points discussed in the video, and hopefully it'll lead you to a good purchase. But the most important thing, Gearfax friends, is to buy what brings out the enthusiasm in the person who is going to be using this keyboard, whether that's you, or your children, or a friend, a parent, anybody. Buy what makes you smile, as I always say on Gearfax. Thanks for watching, I hope that buyer's guide was helpful for you. Please like, comment, or subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Gearfax video. Oops.